Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's math channel, and I'm now going to be going through question number three from the Pure Mathematics 1 P1 June 2021 International A Level LXL exam. And this question here is about, it looks like uh, trigonometry. It says, Figure 1 shows a planned view of a flower bed. The flower bed is in the shape of a triangle ABC. And we're told that AB is P meters, and AC is Q meters, and BC is 2 root 2 meters. An angle BAC is 60 degrees. And we've got to show that P squared plus Q squared minus PQ equals 8. So how do we relate these three sides and this angle of a um, triangle together? Well, we can relate them in, in different ways. Um, the most obvious way, especially if you see that there's, um, you, there's squares here, it's going to be the cosine rule. All right, so you, can, you see three sides and, that, and an angle. So I can relate them together by saying, okay, these, you could say these are the two sides that make the angle. This is the side opposite the angle. So if we think about the cosine rule, one of the forms of it is a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine a. So what this means is this is the side opposite the angle that we know, and these two are the other two sides. So this is the side opposite the angle that we know, and these are the other two sides. So if we just put that into this formula, you're going to have 2 times root 2 all squared equals... We're going to have p squared plus q squared minus, we have 2 times p times q times the cosine of 60 degrees. Okay, so that will give us, um, that should give us something like this. Let's see what happens. You're going to square the 2 and the square the root 2. So that's going to be 4 times 2 equals, you'll have p squared plus q squared minus 2pq now cosine 60 is a half so multiplied by a half the 2 cancels with the 2 gives you pq and we're left with exactly what we have to show 8 equals p squared plus q squared minus pq so we can see clearly that we've got the answer using the cosine rule p squared plus q squared minus pq is equal to 8 so that's the answer to part a and now we're going to move on to part b Okay, part B says, given that the side AC is 2 meters longer than the side AB, use algebra to find the exact value of P and the exact value of Q. So AC, so Q, AC is Q, is 2 meters longer than AB, which is P. So Q is equal to P plus 2 meters. Okay, so Q is equal to P plus 2. So what we can do here is we can substitute the value um, we can substitute the value of Q. Instead of Q, we can put P plus 2 into this equation, and then that would help us to find what we need to find. Okay, so what, that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to take the value of Q as P plus 2. So instead of Q, I'm going to put P plus 2. So I've got P squared plus P plus 2 squared minus P times p plus 2 is equal to 8. So if I solve this equation, I should find p, and then I can use this to find q. So we've got p squared plus, if I square this, you've got a perfect square, so you've got p squared plus 2 times p two times 2, which is 4p, plus the square root of 2, which is 4, minus, you're going to have p squared, and minus 2p is equal to 8. Let's combine the like terms. You're left with a 1p squared and you got plus 4p, 4p minus 2p is plus 2p, sorry, and you got 4 minus 8, which is minus 4 equals 0. So we have here um, a quadratic equation. Now it says find the exact value of p and the exact value of q. So that's an indication that this cannot be factorized. And of course, you can't find two numbers when you multiply them, you get negative 4. When you add them, you get plus 2, okay, because the only options here are uh, 4 and minus 1, which doesn't give you a 2 when you add them together, or 1 and minus 4, which find the same thing, or you can have 2 and 2, which of course won't give 2 and minus 2, which won't give you that if you add them together. So therefore, this has to be um, either you can use the formula or you can complete the square. Okay, But whatever you do, you have to show your steps. And that was the whole point of this statement here. Okay, if you just now write down your answer without showing any steps, without showing that you've completed the square or that you've used the quadratic formula, 
you can't actually factorize here. If you haven't shown those steps, you will definitely lose marks. You can't just say P equals this and P equals this using your calculator. You have to show your steps. Okay, so if you're going to use a quadratic formula, you have to show that you've used it. If you're going to use completing the square, you have to show that you used it. I'm going to do both just to, uh, you know, so it's clear for, for you all. I'll first use completing the square, in which case what I'll do first is I'll write this with the constant on its own on the other side. So p squared plus 2p equals 4. And then what I can do, I can complete the square for, for this. I'll say, okay, this is p plus, and you have a half of this. So you have a square bracket here, and you write a half of the coefficient of this, which is 1. And this, if you expand this, you're going to get p squared plus 2p, but you'll have, my, you'll have a plus 1. So we've got to take away 1 so that this ends up the same as that, and that's equal to 4. Then I add 1 to both sides, so I have p plus 1 squared is equal to 4. And then I take, uh, is equal to 5, sorry, not 4. 4 plus 1 is 5. Sorry about that. And then I take the square root of both sides, but don't forget that when you, when you take the square root of both sides, you can either get plus or minus of root 5. Okay, and then therefore p is equal to minus 1 plus or minus root 5. Those are the possible values of p. Now, um, of course, p can't be negative, okay, because it's a length. So therefore, we have to only accept p as minus 1 plus root 5. So this is the value of p that we accept, okay? We don't write the negative part because p, of course, is a positive value. It's a length. Okay, so we have to write that as your answer. And then we can find Q, which we're going to do in a minute because Q is equal to 2 plus that. So we can find Q. But I'm just going to, before I do that, I'll just show you how to find P using the quadratic formula. If you, if you use a quadratic formula, you'll have P is equal to, um, you're going to have minus B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Okay, so you have A is equal to 1 and B is equal to 2 and c is equal to minus 4. So a is the coefficient of the squared term, and b is the coefficient of the term which isn't squared, and c is the coefficient of the, what well, is basically the constant, and then p is going to be minus b, so minus 2, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is going to be 4, minus 4 times 1 times 4, 4 times 1 times minus 4, so that's going to be 4 times 1 times minus 4, all over, 2 times 1, which is 2 times a, which is 2. So p is equal to minus 2 plus or minus the square root of. You're going to have 4 minus or 4 plus, and that's uh, 4 times 4, 4 plus 16, which is 20 over 2. So p is going to be minus 2 plus or minus, if you take out the perfect square from root 20, that's a 4. So it'll be 4 times 5, so it'll be 2 root 5. Because you, if you take out the, the root 4 times root 5, the root 4 is, gives, is going to give you 2 over 2. And you can see that there's a common factor of 2 here. So you have minus 2 plus or minus 2 root 5. Oh, sorry, minus, what am I doing? Take out minus 2 as a factor. You're going to have minus, take out one, 2 as a factor. So you have minus 1 plus or minus root 5 over 2. The 2's cancel. So, of course, we're only going to accept the positive value. So, we say P is equal to minus 1 plus root 5. And then we know that Q is equal to P plus 2, as I told us. Q is equal to P plus 2. So, that means Q is equal to minus 1 plus root 5 plus 2, which is 1 plus root 5 meters. Okay, so we end up with P is equal to minus 1 plus root 5 meters. And Q is equal to 1 plus root 5 meters. So those are the solutions to this question, part B. And I can now for part C, um, we have already P is equal to minus 1 plus root 5 meters. And Q is equal to 1 plus root 5 meters meters okay that's what we found in question part b now we've got to um, calculate the exact area of this flower bed and we'll use the formula a equals the area equals a half times a b sine c this is a formula we use when we don't have a right angle triangle and basically it helps us to basically find the vertical height of the triangle and a and b are the two sides that um, we know 
and the, the C is the angle between those two sides. So we know all the sides here. We know the lengths of all of these three sides, but we know the angle here, A, 60 degrees. So what I need is this side and this side. Those will be my A and B because those are the two sides that make the angle that we have been given here. So we have to use these two sides in this formula. Okay, so in order to use this formula, we'll have a, the area is equal to a half times P times Q. Now, P and Q is minus 1 plus root 5. I'm just going to write it as root 5 minus 1 like this um, because of a certain reason you'll see in a second. And this will be root 5 plus 1. It's just to help us recognize the difference of squares here. So it's easy for us to expand. We can expand anyway, but just so you can see, it's very easy that way. Times the sine of 60 degrees. Okay, so now, so we have the area equals a half times. Now this is going to, be, this is going to give me 5, root 5 times root 5 is, is 5. The middle term will disappear and you have minus 1 times minus 1, which is minus 1. Okay, times the sine of 60. Now the sine of 60 is root 3 over 2, times root 3 over 2. They want the exact um, area, so it's going to be a in third form, so we'll leave it like that. Sine of 60 is root 3 over 2. If you weren't sure, you could take your calculator and you could just put sine of 60 make sure in your de in your degree mode sine 60 equals and it gives you root 3 over 2. so this is a half times 4 a half times 4 is 2 2 times root 3 over 2 2 is cancel so you're left with root 3 so therefore we can say the area is equal to root 3 meters squared okay that's the area of this flower bed the exact area leave it in third form because i say exact and there's your answer don't round it or anything and that's the answer to part C. And with that, we have concluded this question, which is question number three from this P1 paper. Other questions from this paper can be found in the playlist, which will be located over here. The link will, will be located over here. A link to questions from trigonometry from P1, you can find in this area. Um, here, you will find a link to, to subscribe to the channel. Top of the page, at the top, you'll see the card, which takes you to other P1 paper that you might want to watch. And in the description, you can find links that take you to other um, Edexcel International A-Level papers, P1, P2, P3, P4, M1, S1. Also, IGCSE papers you will find in, that in, in the description box as well. You'll find a link to that. Thank you for watching and see you soon.